New Orleans is a city defined by Mardi Gras, jazz, and oysters. Lots of oysters. But during the stillness of early morning, New Orleans looks and feels different. More like a sleepy southern town. At least until you arrive at a small warehouse tucked away on a quiet street in the French Quarter. The P&J Oyster Company was founded in 1876 and is the oldest continuously operating oyster business in the United States. In 2010, just before the oil spill, P&J's workday usually began at 5 a.m. Today, things are different. We usually shuck on average maybe one day a week now. We used to sell about 15 to 20,000 pounds of oysters in the shell a day that went to oyster bars in and around the country. And we don't do that anymore. We're trying to do our best to maintain our business, and we don't want to see it go down under our tenure. For over 150 years, Louisiana was the nation's largest source of oysters. Thanks to a perfect combination of brackish and warm water, each day thousands of tons of oysters were harvested, loaded onto barges, and sent to New Orleans and on to cities around the country. By 2010, Louisiana supplied nearly 42% of the nation's oysters. But then the Deepwater Horizon blowout happened. Emergency crews did everything possible to protect coastal beaches and marshes. To break up as much oil as possible, dispersants were sprayed onto oil slicks on the surface of the water, as well as directly into the escaping oil. After much debate, massive amounts of fresh water from the Mississippi River were released into the Gulf. At locations all along the lower Mississippi River, giant valves and floodgates were open. And for three weeks, the Louisiana Delta became a freshwater estuary. The hope was that the freshwater release would push the oil away from the coast. But in the end, nothing could stop the advancing oil. Ultimately, the oyster beds of Louisiana suffered a devastating blow. Too much fresh water. The impact on eggs, sperm, and larvae was deadly. The impact on the economy of Louisiana's oystering communities was equally damaging. About 60 miles southeast of New Orleans is the mostly African-American fishing community of Point Alahash. Nearly all the oyster boats in the local marina are idle. Byron Enkelade is president of the Louisiana Oystermen Association. After the spill, went out there and found nothing but dead oysters. This community is dead. It pushed it into poverty like we have never saw before. We have always prided ourselves as being recession-proof in this community. What's the road to recovery? Give us something. We need the facts, regardless of what it is. We need facts. And, and we need good signs. You know, that's a, a, a big uh, question, and that's the question that we're trying to explore. 